My pathogen project is on Carinibacterium diphtheriae. Carinibacterium diphtheriae is a non-motile, gram-positive, bacillus bacteria that manifests in the cutaneous and nasopharynx regions. This pathogen can be spread via secretion, droplets, or direct contact. If C. diphtheriae is transmitted via skin lesion or pharyngeally, a suite of membrane forms over the lesion. This membrane may contain host immune cells, dead skin cells, and bacteria. This pathogen was first identified by Edwin Klebs in 1883, but was first described by Hippocrates in the 5th century BC. Symptoms include fever, dysphagia, hypoxia, paralysis, and heart failure. Diphtheria of the nasopharynx typically manifests in three ways, laryngeal diphtheria, anterior nasal diphtheria, and pharyngeal and tonsillar diphtheria. In laryngeal diphtheria, there are many cases where it spawns from pharyngeal diphtheria. Anterior nasal diphtheria is very similar to a cold. Bloody nasal discharge and a white membrane covering the nasal septum usually occur. However, it is difficult for the toxin to disseminate from here, so quick treatment with antitoxin and antibiotics is effective. Pharyngeal and tonsillar diphtheria is the most dangerous and most common form, as the toxin can easily disseminate. Pharyngitis, malaise, sore throat, fever, and apoxia are the first symptoms. A membrane soon covers the tonsils and soft palate within the next few days, sometimes resulting in respiratory obstruction. If the infection persists, submandibular and anterior neck edema can occur. Lymphadenopathy, or bull neck, along with prostration, pallor, stupor, coma, and death may result in the following days. Skin or cutaneous diphtheria is more common in the tropics or within homeless populations in the U.S. C. diphtheriae manifests itself in the skin via rash, ulceration, and a membrane. This form is rare but can also result in dissemination. There are four biotypes of C. diphtheriae. Midas, Intermedius, Palfanti, and Gravis. To diagnose an infection of toxigenic C. diphtheriae, Mueller Miller Tellurite Auger, Loeffler Auger, and Tinsdale Tellurite Auger may be used. Tellurite is necessary to grow the bacteria in an auger. A cotton swab tip is used to swab the tonsils and tonsil beds when testing for pharyngeal infections. For skin lesions, the suede membrane may have to be manipulated to uncover the bacteria below it for swabbing. Helic in immunodiffusion tests in eukaryotic cell lines can be used to test toxigenicity in vitro. Guinea pig challenge tests and rabbit skin tests can be used to test toxigenicity in vivo. This pathogen must be infected with a bacteriophage carrying the tox gene in order to produce toxins. Unless C. diphtheriae is infected with this bacteriophage, it cannot cause the disease we know as diphtheria. The human immunological response is, within, is with antibodies to these toxins. After diagnosis, immediate treatment of diphtheria is the administration of the passive antitoxin. Penicillin and erythromycin are typically used for treatment as well. The tox gene can be spread via the lysogenic and coronary bacteriophage conversion of non-toxigenic C. diphtheriae. The diphtheria toxin affects the human body by inhibiting protein synthesis within cells. Localized tissues at the site of infection are killed and a suede membrane forms. This membrane allows the toxin to enter the bloodstream and is disseminated from there. This toxin is compromised of a single polypeptide of MR58342 and made of 535 amino acid residues. The expression of this gene requires iron to function. When the toxin is released from C. diphtheriae, it is cleaved into two A and B chains. The chains are connected via a disulfide bond at the 186 and 201 positions. These chains are kept together upon reaching the cytosol. The toxin spreads throughout the body and myocardium and peripheral nerves take the biggest hits. The toxin then connects to HB, EGF, or heparin binding epidermal growth factor precursor. The host cell then endocytizes the toxin and the A and B chains are disconnected. The B chain stays behind and acts as the core within the endosome. Diphtheria toxin uses elongation factor 2 or EF2 to inhibit protein creation by moving ADPR moiety to EF2 from NAD. 
RNA translation is then inhibited and the toxin ADP ribosylates dipthamine. This yields protein chains from continuing in formation. Today, the main target of outbreaks lie within drug and alcohol dependent communities. Russia has had a particularly difficult time ridding the country of the disease due to their drop in healthcare and vaccination availabilities. There are vaccinations to prevent C. diphtheriae, such as DTAP, TDAP, DT, and TD. The vaccine uses diphtheria to toxoid, which is a formaldehyde inactivated toxin. If these vaccines are given correctly, there is a 97% success rate. This toxin is one of the most studied toxins in microbiological history. The diphtheria toxin can also be used as an anti-neoplastic or an agent used to prevent the growing of tumors, such as cutaneous T-cell lymphoma. Can we find other possible uses for C. diphtheriae in the future?